going on guys? Today I want to talk about Remix. So over the last week I've been watching NextConf, playing with Next13, it's really cool, but I've heard tons of people say, oh this is just like Remix, this is built off Remix, this is just like it. So I wanted to play with Remix myself. I Last night I went in, spent I think it was like 3 or 4 hours and built out a little demo for myself of actually utilizing all the concepts of Remix and I was blown away. Remix is really, really cool, and the way it works feels incredibly intuitive to me. This focus on web standards, like they say, by using get requests and post requests the way they were built to be used is amazing. I really like it, so today I just want to show you, first of all, motivation behind it, and second of all, a full example. So down below, I've got the links to the GitHub of the example I made. It contains a simple API written in Go to get the data, and then it also contains a full Remix app that fetches the data, styles it up, and posts it out to the user. It utilizes the loaders, the routing, the actions. I tried to get as many of the cool things that Remix does into it as possible, give you a good example of what it is, why you should care, and yeah. So before we get into that, um, first of all, I just want to say thank you. The growth over the past few days has been absurd. I started doing this seriously on Sunday. That was the first time I put out something that I had a good thumbnail, that I put a, pun a bunch of time into, that I really tried on, and I've just been working on getting better every single day, building this out, and the response has been incredible. So thank you for that. Every single day throughout November, I'll be posting something. We're going to keep trying to add new stuff, keep trying to make them better, keep trying to grow. So yeah, if you want to join that, subscribe, like, do all the things. Thank you for being here, and let's get into it. All right, so let's get started with the motivation. Why Remix? Why do I care? So right here, this is directly off of the Remix.run website, and this is an example of the uh, nested routing structure and the main reason why I was initially drawn to Remix in the first place. So if we look right here, we have a basic, basic dashboard they made. We have the route, we have the sales, we have the invoices, and we have the invoice ID. So as you can see from the diagram right here, they're nested within each other and they're built from the root. So we can see we have the root right here, which is example.com, sales, which is slash sales, invoices, which is slash invoices, and then invoice ID, which is just the ID. So we get this really great system where if we wanted to get invoice ID uh, 12, 102,001, we just click on whichever one has that ID and then it'll just swap out this section right here instead of going through and swapping out everything and this is what leads Remix to be really, really performant. It also leads to the really intuitive data fetching you can do with it, which they showcase right here. So if we look at this right here, we have two different pages. With Remix, we just put this down and then everything pops in at once. And the reason for that is because all the data is fetched on the server using the loader. And then once the data is fetched, it's sent down all at the exact same time. Because each one of these components is rendered at the same time since they fetch the data at the same time versus in a normal app we have to slowly waterfall this down we get the first one then once we have this first one okay now we get the second one now that we got the second one now we can get the third one and then finally you can get the fourth one so you can see this app is out and ready to be used much much faster than this other one is and this also leads to a much better developer experience because you can create these really nice modular layouts using intuitive concepts like just fetching the data from a get request. So to illustrate all these concepts, I built out a full demo. This took me, I think as I said, a few hours last night, and I wanted to illustrate the concepts of data fetching and data posting because those are the two big things Remix has, as well as nested roots. So on the homepage, nothing important. Dashboard, we have this cool little thing where I just took data from my company's site just because it's neat data and I can style it easily. So I took this data and I created these four sub pages within this dashboard. So I have this dashboard page, which is just the root here. And then within dashboard, I have Apple, Amazon, Meta, and Tesla. So I'll show you how I actually uh, implemented that in the code in a moment here. But then the next thing we'll look at is the creator. This is an example of doing uh, Remix forms, which the way they do forms is fantastic, and actually posting data to the server using redirects and nested components to make something cool. So if we just put in random stuff here and we hit create and then it'll create this new insider and show them here. This isn't actually being saved, but I'll show you what that really looks like. So inside here, you are greeted with the basic uh, Remix file structure. We have the public directory, styles, node modules, app, API, nothing too dissimilar from a Next app or a React app or whatever, but where it gets different is inside this app directory. So when we go inside of app, we're going to see the main uh, website itself. We have the styles, which is just the compiled version of our, our external styles. 
we have the roots, which are the actual pages. So Remix utilizes files. Um, Remix utilizes file-based routing, just like Next. So um, having this creator.tsx means that slash creator is going to uh, export this page, uh, as you would expect. Then we have interfaces. This is just TypeScript stuff. And we have components in here, which are just React components that I can import and use within my other pages. So nothing too crazy there. But where it gets interesting is when we get into how these pages actually work and how the data fetching and nested components are actually used. So the most interesting one to start with is going to be the dashboard. So inside here, we have dashboard slash Apple, and then we have all this stuff out here. But when we look at the actual dashboard here, none of that's being shown. All we have is just the side nav, which is this. And then we have a basic div and a heading, and then this outlet. This outlet is the key to Remix's nested routing. When we look at our uh, directory over here, we have this dashboard directory. If we open up dashboard, you're going to see Apple, Amazon, Meta, and Tesla in here. And if we look at our URLs, we have Apple, Amazon, Meta, and Tesla. It's all changing up there. So that's how those two are linked together. So now that we have this, um, these become nested components within the dashboard. So then when we go to dashboard slash Apple, it's going to render the root of dashboard here, and then it's going to put whatever we have nested inside here within this outlet. So if we go to Apple, everything in here is now getting rendered inside of that outlet. That's how we're getting this um, Tim Apple's trades and then each of his trades iterated out here. So the way that data is actually fetched is by using Remix's loader functions. So Remix has two key server-side functions that you can utilize on any page or any component, which is the loader and the uh, action method. The loader is basically just a get request. So whenever you make a get request to this page, and this is what we're actually doing in the browser, whenever you make a, when you just visit uh, slash dashboard slash Apple, you're actually making a request to slash dashboard slash Apple, which is what this loader will execute. And then we have uh, the actions, which are post requests. Anytime you make a post request to dashboard Apple, the action function will... This page does not have an action function, so nothing will happen. Now, looking at how this actually works, we start with this loader. This loader will then... needs to be exported, and then whatever is returned from here will then get used by this use loader data hook down inside of our main React component. So instead of passing in like for Next.js for server-side props, which is not necessarily the exact same thing, but it's the most analogous to how this works, you would then pass that data in as props. Here it's just passed in via a hook. So we call this loader, and inside this loader, I have this get loader data. So I am calling my external API, which I wrote in that other directory, and getting the data I need for Apple, and then returning it as delta form, which is just the type, and then I'm typing this as loader data. So the reason why this exists is to get that end-to-end -end type safety. TRPC provides that, and that's why it's so great, but it doesn't really work here. So we have to kind of create that ourselves, and the best way to do it is to just type each end with the exact same thing. Uh, this is how Remix recommends doing it in the docs. I think it works pretty well. And uh, the last thing I kind of want to point out is that I'm able to use these environment variables here in get loader data and loader, and that is because this is executed on the server. This is not executed on the client, so I can put sensitive things like an API key up here, and it's safe and I can do all this loading before they even get to the page. Because you'll notice when I click on Amazon, nothing like there's no spinners or anything because all of that data is there before it hydrates. So there's not JavaScript fetching happening, happening on the client side. So then finally down here, very basic stuff, just printing out the data, trade cards. If you want to look at that yourself, you can, but it's not important for the sake of this demo. So going into the creator page, we have a very similar structure to the dashboard page. I have the side nav and then I have this outlet. I, I wanted to kind of showcase how nested routing could be used in a post request environment too. So what I did is I created this dashboard directory, or no. What I did is I created this creator directory and then I have a create and a view. So when we go on here, we're at create. So we have slash create and we can go in here and do this and this and this, then hit create and that'll redirect us to view and then it'll pass in this information from the post request and populate out with the stuff we put in the form. So we went back here and then put in like, real stuff, real, and then put it out. It'll create it, and now it'll show real stuff back here. So the way this actually works is via this action method. The action method is what I mentioned earlier, and this is just a post request. If we made a post request to slash uh, creator slash create, this will get executed, and we actually do that down below. I'll show you in a moment. And all this is doing is, is just pulling out form data. So Remix utilizes forms, and if you're not familiar with HTML forms, let me go over them real quick. 
uh, new devs probably haven't actually seen these because we just use on submit and react world, but forms actually have stuff built into them and actually do stuff like the basic HTML form. And what they do is they fire the method that you pass in here. So whenever we submit this form, it is going to make a post request to whatever route we pass in and the action is going to be creator slash create. So it's going to make a post request to slash creator slash create and it's going to pass in as arguments everything we put in here. So it's going to pass in the name, it's going to pass in the title, it's going to pass in the CIK. So since we're making this post request to slash creator slash create and we're on slash creator slash create, we can make this action function which is going to get invoked every time we make that post request then we can pull the form data out. So form data dot get name dot get title dot get CIK. And then this invariant is just ensuring, okay, are these actually here? Do we have the name? Do we have the title? Do we have the CIK? And then in the real world, we would just save this to a database here. We're not going to do that because I don't really feel like setting that up. There's no point. Then what I'm actually going to do is just make some parameters here. So I'm going to set up URL parameters and I'm going to then return a redirect because if you're making a post request, you need to make sure you return a redirect to a normal get request to a normal page or else you're going to, if you refresh the page, you'll resubmit the form and you don't want that to happen. So you want to uh, redirect them to another page or back to the same page. And I'm going to redirect them to slash creator slash view. And I'm going to pass in these parameters from what they sent. So in the real world, you'd probably pass in like a created ID, and then we would pass that redirect to the view page. Then since we get to the view page, we're now going to call a get request because the user is going to land on the um, view page and they're going to need to get the data. So since they're calling a get request, they're going to get called this loader method. And this loader method, if we had passed in an ID, could then fetch the uh, new entry from the database, populate all the information, put it into loader data. But since we didn't actually create something, we just passed in the data as URL parameters. So I made this get loader data function, which will take in a URL, parse it out, and then set the name, title, and CIK. Uh, sorry. It'll parse the URL and then pull out the name, title, and CIK, which is what we passed in from the create. It'll return it. And then down here in the main body, we can then utilize loaderdata.name, loaderdata.cik, loaderdata.title. So that's a sort of example of how you can actually do form submitting in Remix, which I think is really intuitive. This is way more intuitive and way nicer than the sort of React way of just um, make an on submit function and then best of luck have fun. Uh, E dot prevent default and then make your dreams come true. No real control on anything. For me, this seems very intuitive. I haven't used this at scale, and obviously this is a demo and this is just showing Remix like this is as good as it can possibly get because it's extremely simple. But I really think that this sort of pattern of using get and using post the way they were intended to be used, I like it a lot and I want to explore this deeper. So the final thing I want to show you is error handling. Error handling in React often really sucks, but Remix does it really intelligently by utilizing these things they call error boundaries. So inside this view, I'm passing, I am exporting an error boundary component. And this error boundary component will render anytime there's an error on this view, but it won't crash the site and it won't crash anything outside of this view. So let's see how that would work. So we go into view and then I take away these parameters. The invariant that I had up here will fail because all three of these will be null. So this is going to fail and suddenly an error is going to be passed out. But you notice over here, this didn't change and the whole site didn't crash. It just threw an error in here. And that's because the error is being ca caught by this error boundary. So if we look at the actual uh, creator page, all of this is untouched, unscathed. It's just this outlet. So this outlet breaks. And this is a great pattern that you can utilize. So imagine you had a dashboard of 30 components. And if one of them has an error, you can throw a little error inside that one. And then everything else stays safe and there's no issues to deal with. So yeah, that's a really nice way of dealing with errors. And um, I think that's about it. Um, just wanted to break down Remix. Again, all of this is linked. I have the full source code. If you have any questions, let me know. I'm going to be doing more Remix stuff in the future. So yeah, thanks for watching.